Yeah. All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to our November Lunch and Learn. We want to thank Rick Ziddle from Prime Lending for providing us a nice lunch today. Um, and we have Maggie, I'll let her say her last name because I know I'm not. Oh, Garrido Cortez. It's Garrido Cortez. Is that me? Um, we'll have them on to give us our presentation. So we'll let uh, Rick take a couple moments and we'll turn it over to them. Thank you. Um, so look, I wasn't, I didn't know I'd get a chance to speak, so I'm not completely prepared, but that's, but that's all right. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I, I, it's an easy segue, but, but honestly, it's kind of like, in my opinion, one of the best things out there right now. I know this is a first time home buyer seminar, and so I can talk briefly about the first time home buyer offerings through the West Virginia Housing Development Fund. I'm sure some of you have messed with that some, some maybe not as much. Um, but over the last 20 years, there's times where it hasn't been necessarily much better than like in the USDA level. But that's not the case now. It's it's far and away better than anything else. Okay. So a couple reasons. Um, the interest rate only is 5.83%. Okay. As you know, as you've sir, you've seen that settlements rates are in the sevens. I think in the next month, you're going to start seeing closings where people are locked in or not eat. Okay? But the first time home buyer rate is still 5.83. Um, for comparison's sake, I did a calculation uh, last week on this, and that equates to about $50,000 in buying power. All right? So it, it, it's it's pretty big deal. Um, another big advantage is that that rate comes with no points. So if I'm sure you've noticed on your settlement statements, you probably notice buyers paying points more than they ever have, right? Um, if your buyer needs closing cost concessions, they probably are requesting more than, than you find normal. Um, and that's the reason. I had somebody tell me that, yeah, the, the, the buyer requested 12 grand in closing costs. I was like, well, that's probably because they have to pay a point or two to keep a rate out of the nine. Um, so that's the that's a that's a market issue. That's a rate issue with the market and the uncertainty going forward. That's why so many of these loans have points attached to them. It's difficult to get a conventional loan or an FHA without paying points. Well, with West Virginia housing, those loans have no points. So the program also offers down payment and closing cost assistance. Okay? It's up to $7,500. Um, it comes in the form of a second loan. It's, it's a 15-year loan at 2%. So you're not going to get money cheaper than that. Um, so uh, we, I, I just closed one last week. The buyers would not have bought a house if not for this program because they could not have afforded to buy a house at 7.5%. But at 583, they could. They bought it with no points. They got the second, which they got. They, they didn't need the full amount. They got 5,000 to 2%. Their payment was 38 bucks a month. All right. Um, it's also kind of important to note that the program is it's not really a loan program. It's more of an umbrella with insurance. So it can be paired with a USDA loan. So a buyer can get a USDA loan. And instead of getting their USDA loan at seven and a quarter percent with a point and a half, they can get that same USDA loan when combined with West Virginia housing at 5.83 with no points. Um, you can pair with FHA loans, VA, and conventional. Okay, um, I'm working on one right now that people have a hundred thousand dollar down payment, but they are first time buyers, so they're taking advantage of it rather than getting seven percent, they're getting a conventional loan 5.83. It has reduced PMI on conventional loans, another advantage. Um, the uh, um, what's the train of thought there? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, as we I think we probably know, there are income restrictions with it. You have to be a first-time buyer. That's defined by not having not owned in the last three years. If you sold your house four years ago, you're a first-time buyer. Okay. Um, the income caps, it's really a big deal, I think, in Jefferson County. The income caps from, in, in Berkeley County are, are somewhat limiting. Um, but in Jefferson County, the income caps are really high. It's like 138000 for a family of two. And a family of, of more than three. So if you got a mom and dad with, with a child, it's uh, like 160,000 Jefferson County. Berkeley's around 86, 950. For two. 86? 
Yeah, about, about that. that. It's 86, 950, 87. They just changed them a couple yeah. weeks ago, a little bit, but not much. A three person household is 99,000, 99,950, I believe it is. Or something real close to that. Um, one, of the, one of the advantages, though, West Virginia housing doesn't require you to use the whole entire household income. So, for example, I'm working on one now. I've got the husband and the wife. Together, they make too much money for the loan. So what we can do is we can leave the wife off. We can leave her off the loan and just do it in his name. West Virginia Housing is accepting that. Okay? So, you know, you kind of work around those caps sometimes that way. It doesn't always work, but sometimes. Um, so the program, it really is a big deal, like I say, with the, uh, the locks. They're 60-day locks. Um, if someone wants to buy new construction, they want to have a house built. They're going to close in, in March. Uh, if they have a free six month lock. So they, they get, you can get extended locks. Okay. So you can get that 583 and extended. You can reserve your rate now because that rate will change. When they run out of money, they'll <laughs> issue another 50 million at a, at a new rate, which probably is going to be higher than 5.83. Yeah. What's the limit of the amount you can borrow? So the house price limit in Berkeley County, I think, is 349. So the house price can't be more than that. Um, it's not based on loan amount. I tried that. If the house is 355 and they put 10 grand down for a loan of 345, no, it's based on the house price. Okay. So now in Jefferson County, that house price is seven, it's high enough that it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's seven or eight hundred grand. So um, so if, if if you work in Jefferson County, keep it in mind, it's a big deal. Um, it really is. Um, you know, the rates again, two percent. Two percentage points lower than market. Um, years ago, the program well, could be kind of tough to get through because you had to send it to Charleston to get it underwritten. And I, I, for some folks, it might still be that way. I'm not actually sure, but we, we have delegated underwriters, so we underwrite them in the house. So we don't have to send it to Charleston until the end. We send it there, they look it over, stamp it, send it back. It takes 24 hours. Um, we don't underwrite those ourselves, so you don't, we don't have to send those out. So um, it, uh, you know, it, it, you've got to juggle sometimes. I got a home buyer now that's not sure where they want to buy. And so I had to do them a, a kind of a little chart and said, well, if you buy in Berkeley County, here's what you can do. But in Jefferson, you're under the income tax. So you can do this. If you buy in Hampshire, you can do this because they're considered Hampshire as well. So, so, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's important what county, but, uh, uh, those are some of the big advantages. The rate, obviously the closing cost is a big deal. Not only the closing costs that you can get, you can also get it as down payment assistance. I have somebody looking for a house now. They're, they have to go FHA, um, but they, um, they're, um, and they're getting seller concessions. So they're going to use that, close that assistance money from the fund for their down payment. So that's why you use it with USDA. Because it's, you can use the bond money, the program with USDA. Absolutely. So it's this way you can cover your closing costs. That's if right. you're doing 100% fine. That's right. right. Yeah. So it's real easy to do. They can come in with no money. They don't have to ask the seller for money. That's they can do a USDA. Yes. And they got to do under those income caps. And that can be a challenge sometimes, <coughs> especially in Berkeley County. I think we all get kind of frustrated. We feel like Berkeley County's caps should be higher than they are. Our caps are lower than Hampshire <laughs> County. It doesn't make sense logically, but it is what it is. So um, the fund sets those, and those aren't going to change until next year sometime. So, um, but uh, I think I mentioned reduced PMI. Again, it's not a loan program itself. It's more of an umbrella or an insurance. You combine it and decide if somebody comes to me, the first thing I do is, okay, we're going USDA, FHA, VA, or conventional. And once we decide that, we see if we can work bonding with that as well. So it's always like you get a USDA loan, but you get the benefits of bond. Right. Yeah, because you can use that money. So if you don't have the debt, have to come up with the down payment on the USDA loan, then mm -hmm. you can at least use the seven five hundred for your closing. That's right. And you still have no. I have a question now as well. Please. Um, I have heard that pertaining to the first time home buyer part of it, that veterans, that there's a clause written in that program that even if the vet sold his house six months ago. He is still eligible to use that program. That's correct. Right. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I thank you. You're doing much better than I am. So, yeah. I was a loan officer. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, they allow veterans to as a benefit to use at one time and not even be a first time buyer. Yeah. So they can take advantage of their VA benefit, which is no money down, no PMI on a VA loan. They can do all that, but instead of getting seven and a quarter, they get 583 and they can get the money. They can get the money. So it's a big deal. In fact, every home buyer that I get, that's the first place I look. Can we make it worth with this? Because it's it's just, it's the best one. It's not even really close. Right so now. I look at right now. It's really not close. <laughs> People are always like, I don't have money. I don't have money. Sellers will put pay right. So so if you're doing new construction as well, it works out beautifully. If you're just going to go FHA and do the down payment and get the ten thousand covered concession, like if you need to see your ear. Correct. Literally, your buyers are going to get money back at the table after they pay for their appraisal. They're, you know, based yep. on what the sales price is. They pay for an appraisal, give an earnest money deposit. You know, there's gonna... also a, the fund also has a moving on up program. We don't do this as much, and it's not as exciting because the rate's in the sevens now, but it's for the folks that aren't first time buyers and the income caps are higher. So it's not. A lot better, but it still comes with no points, which again is a big deal. That's huge. So, I'm, I'm sure you guys are seeing, correct me if I'm you're seeing points on most of your projects now, right? Okay. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. If you care to hear it, do you care to hear it? Sure. Yeah. So, so the economists believe that rates are going to come down in the next year or two. Okay. So, you know, you get you get inflation and to combat inflation, the Fed raises interest rates to get inflation under control. That's the logic. Um, and they keep raising them until they feel like inflation's under control. Now, once you do that, you go into a recession, and how do, what does the Fed do then? Well, then they start to lower interest rates, okay? So that's why lenders have to charge points, because if they did not, there's an assumption that, that a good amount of these loans that close now are gonna refinance in a year or two when rates come down, and, and, and the, the banking industry, mortgage companies would take a bath. Because they don't do these loans to have them refinance in two years, but they'll lose their loans significantly. So they have to charge points up front on this stuff to hedge your bets. And the only way you can get out of charging points, sometimes you can't. You can't. Um, but the only way you get out of it sometimes is they, they take a rate, they have to take a rate of ease. Nobody wants that. So, so it's a tough time in that regard. Um, if you go on right now to Rocket Mortgage, for example, and so a lot of times when people question me on this, I, I use this as a reference to say, hey, this is a, this is a, a, a market or an industry-wide issue right now. Go on and look at Rocket Mortgage's rates today. I haven't been on there in a week or two, but it, I promise you it'll say 7.5% on conventional with two points. They just quote everything with at least almost two points out of the, out of the gate. And, you know, a point is a percent. If you lose three hundred grand, that's six thousand dollars in points and closing costs. So it's it's significant. So it's harder than ever to kind of get these folks in without leaving money. You know. So any questions? Please. I have two questions. Um, it's a bill. So what's the purpose of the points? That would be number one. What is the and then number two, um, why are some people? What's the purpose of the mortgage? Does everybody have to pay, or just because of your credit score, or what is it for? Because I didn't pay mine, yeah. but then all my clients are paying mortgage insurance, and I sure. like help them. Yeah. But then again, I need to know. Yeah, sure. So, um, first question um, was about points. So historically, points are there's two types of points. There's origination points, which are just fees for the lender. It's the way the lender to make extra money. Okay. And then there's discount points, and I'm, that's what you're talking about, discount. And typically, discount points are used to buy you right now, okay? Um, a point is a percent. Sometimes folks think, oh, if I pay a point, I get my rate down a percent. No, no. Uh, it, a half a percent at best, and that's better than normal because when rates are lower, you might only get a quarter or an eighth of a percent to pay a point. So when rates were 275, nobody was paying points. It was so rare. I didn't really even offer it to buyers because... I would look at it as like it doesn't make sense to spend this money to save an eighth of a percent below your payment eleven dollars. Um, now, again, as I said, as the rates have gone up, there's so much uncertainty now. It's the, the points are the points are really it's it's <coughs> lack of better. It's, it's an insurance for the, the lenders, the mortgage industry, the banking industry, 
to protect against wholesale refinances. Because again, when these loans are closed, the banks make the more money over the long term and the interest due. And when these things go, so there's an expectation that it's likely that a lot of these loans are refinanced within one, two, three years. So that so the banks are forced to charge points up front so that they don't get, get destroyed when these refinances hit. Um, and then your second question was, was mortgage insurance. Um, PMI, private mortgage insurance, it's, um, it, it's an insurance on loans that have a down payment of less than 20% generally speaking. If the buyers pay it, um, it becomes part of their payment and it ensures the banking industry, the mortgage industry against default. Okay, it's not something that one lender says, we'll do it, we won't. I mean, you know, there are special programs out there that, that may not have it, but if you have 20% down, you don't get it. Um, FHA is, is life of loan, unless you put down at least, I think, 10%, and it's not life of loan. Um, once, if, if someone buys a house with 5% down, they have PMI, then that goes away once they reach 78% of their original original uh, sale price. So, and, and, and if you put 5% down, you wait, it, it takes about 10 to 12 years for that to go away. Now, more often than not, those folks refinance that house at some point and do it that way. Um, USDA loans have PMI. Um, it's reduced. It's less than what other programs. VA loans don't have it at all. Um, no PMI on VA loans. Um, FHA loans are usually the highest PMI that they've, they've adjusted that down, so it's not as high as it was. Uh, conventional loans, it's credit score driven. So if, if, if you have a buyer with a 650 credit score and they don't have 20% down, they can't really get a conventional loan. They can, but the PMI would be obscene. Mm -hmm. So those folks kind of have to go FHA at that point. Once you get under about a 700 credit score, then it starts to kind of make sense to go FHA because the PMI would be so much. Um, and, you, and when I say so much, I, I had somebody recently, their credit score was 626. Well, we can do that conventional, but his PMI, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was $300 a month. Yeah. You know, so so for him, we're like, listen, you qualify a convention, but you don't want to go to convention. You want to go to FHA. Because FHA, USDA, that PMI figure is, is a flat number. It doesn't matter what your credit score is. Conventional, it does. So that's what it is. Um, you said you didn't have it. You probably had 20% of the I can't, yeah, so I'm not sure. So I just said, I would not take the numbers. I would just take I don't know what I'm doing. Well, she charged me probably a point. Well, so you can do what's called lender paid PMI. I don't do it. We can because I, I don't think it serves the buyer. It, it might make them feel better. Yeah, it might make them say, "Oh, I, I don't have PMI," but the truth is, they pay a higher rate. Right. So it's 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 built into the rate. So and you can do mixed PMI where they can pay some points up front and get lower PMI. But I've done the calculations, and I don't think that's cost effective either. They're better off to pay the PMI, especially in this market where you lot of stuff you got to pay points anyway. So, as far as points go, if for a very easy, clear cut understanding of that is it's prepaid interest. They want their interest up front. They know, you know, I, your explanation was perfect, but if you cut through all of it, it's just saying, like, hey, we're pretty sure you're going to refinance. We want six grand up front. So it's a form of prepaid interest for my understanding. As far as the West Virginia Housing Program, I've been working with that for the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, through Eric Singer <coughs> for a while, he was the only one that could have it. Uh, I love the program. I would say that 80% of my buyers do qualify for it. Um, it's a fantastic uh, program to go through. PMI does nothing to benefit your buyer. It protects a bank. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's a poor yeah. And again, I agree that conventional, you know, typically what people have because when I first bought a house, I got charged it. And it was like to the tune of $116 a month. It's a lot of I mean for yeah. People who are low income. Now this is a good question because I don't know what happened, but basically when I refinanced conventional. Because we, when we bought it, it was like 4%, then you know, it went down to like 2.9 or whatever. When we refinanced the conventional, it did come off. They took it off. But we had had a significant growth in our, we didn't do a cash out on it. So we just went, like our payment dropped significantly. Um, so that might be something from a realtor standpoint to coach a buyer on that that would be, you know, you'll refinance that bit. But those, those are all points that 
I think it would be a more clear cut, like, it's your fingers. From my understanding, I would be wrong. No, that's actually a good way to say it in a way that makes sense. And I'll, I'll actually probably explain it that way going forward, because in a sense, it's not really, pretty, but it really is. That's yeah. what they're doing. They're kind of covering themselves. It's like an insurance, so that when we finance this, they don't take a bath. So that's a good way to say it, yeah. And when, when, you, when you refile, that's how most people get rid of their PMI. Because yeah. as your house value goes up, when you re, yeah. you may not have 20% equity when you buy, so you get PMI. But four years later, when you refinance it, you have 20% equity that you get for that. Yeah, and Prime Lending probably does do that. Because like I don't even remember when I refinanced. I didn't request them to remove it. We were just trying to do a no cash out to drop our payment. Yeah. And the lenders went like they just it came mm -hmm. off, and that like they kind of put me that on the back, and like oh yep, you know, my gone. I'm like, woohoo, even better. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if we wanted to as a lender charge PMI, we couldn't. I mean, there's no reason a loan right. officer would want to do that. There's no benefit. It's right. kind of one of those things like, hey, you got a lower rate and you got no PMI, so yeah. Right. You're the hero. Yeah. Don't want my wife to do that. She would probably think that. Yeah, you guys are great. Yeah, do a good job. All right, well, thank you to Rick again. Thank you. There's some lunch left. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got cards. I'm just going to yeah. go around and quietly drop one with each other. If you've got any questions, give me a call. Um, if you want more explanation, again, the first time home buyer program, uh, Rick and I have been working together for about 15 years. Yeah. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's, it's a big deal, and um, yeah, most of the leather or the local lenders don't offer it. And I'll tell you why they don't offer it. This is the truth. It's not profitable. I know. It's not. They're not profitable. So a lot of lenders don't do it because it's not profitable. We and I'm proud of that, and that's why I still work at Prime Lending because our bosses say give the buyer their best loan. We'll make money on the next loan. That's kind of the mindset, you know. Just get the volume in. Um, and so we, we do them, but that's why a lot of owners don't do them. They're not profitable. We, we do make next to nothing. Is from a so. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm so glad. How's everybody doing today? Uh, my name is Margarita, like the cocktail, but um, everyone knows me as Maggie. And I am a HUD certified housing counselor and I work for Telemont Corporation. So I don't know if it, you all have even heard of Telemont. Raise a hand, anybody you've heard of Telemont, right? Okay, great. If you don't know, we're a community action agency for a nonprofit, HUD approved agency, and we have several different programs that we provide for folks in the Eastern Canyon. My part is, is I'm a, a housing program coordinator and I run uh, the housing and financial department piece of Telemont. At Telemont here in West Virginia in Marksburg, we have a homeless veteran program, a transitional housing program for uh, homeless vets and that are coming out of the VA Medical Center. Um, we have a permanent supportive housing for chronically homeless folks. We get referrals from the West Virginia Coalition and we're able to house them. We provide intensive case management. At our veterans program, we have our Victory House, which is for homeless veterans that are you know, coming out of the VA center. We can house up to 11 male veterans. Then we have our transition in place. So when they are done with their time at Victory House and they've you know, done all the things that they needed to do, uh, then they go and they go to the transition in place program oftentimes and they can have their family. We have six apartment building in Martinsburg. Uh, they can have a couple of two bedroom apartments there and then we also subsidize some of the rent for them based on their income. Uh, but talking about housing, I'm so glad Rick is here because I taught home buyer education last night. So um, we offer a home buyer education program once a month, every single month. It's usually the first Monday and Tuesday. It's from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we go through a whole pro the whole home buyer education process. And the, Rick was saying earlier, you know, PMI, I drilled this in there, you know, the mortgage insurance does not protect you, it protects the lender. And we absolutely had a big discussion about points last night, and I was like, gosh, I'm going to invite you to come teach that thing. Yeah. So our classes that we have, our, our book is about this thing, and it's six chapters. We cover the first three chapters, and we start off with, you know, are you ready to buy a home? 
And I'll start my little presentation. I didn't um, uh, create this PowerPoint, so oh, oh, I need to wait that. Yeah, it'll just take a few seconds. Okay, there you go. And uh, the other one by our uh, counselor, uh, the housing counselor, uh, created this PowerPoint, so and I've not used it, so I'll just bear with me. Um, okay, phone, current slide, right? So we offer this. They get a when they complete the class, they get a certificate of completion, uh, and it's by a HUD approved agency. Uh, and often these down payment assistance programs, like Rick mentioned, it's required that the client take a class. They can do it online through eHome America, or they can do it uh, in seat if they prefer with us here at Telemon, right? Um, the, uh, the certificate is good for a year. And uh, so let's talk about Berkeley County. Nancy Strine, you know, runs the city of Martinsburg's home down payment assistance program, right? And so her, she really prefers that the clients do uh, in seat, right? Because they, she feels that they get a lot more out of it. Marcia, yes. your battery on your laptop is low. I put my charger right here in case you don't have one with you. Oh, I didn't bring one. I'm okay. sorry, let me see. It's like an Android type thing. That's okay, does this one work for you? Yes, I bet it does. Um, nope, I got the wrong. It looks like a cell phone. It's got a flat thing on it. Well, if it doesn't work, that's fine. If we get, if we lose it, then that's okay. Um, but these are some of the things. So we we talk about, you know, are you ready? The advantages, disadvantages of the differences between being a renter and a homeowner. Um, steps in the home buying process. We tell them you're going to meet a whole bunch of people during this whole process. You'll have probably meet at least six or seven people in, during this home buying process, uh, and then we talk, we discuss, you know, how uh, how to get pre-qualified. We actually in the book shows you how to do a pre like a self pre-qualification, and we tell the the lenders, hey, this is not um, guaranteed, or not the lenders. We tell the clients, you know, a pre-qualification is different from a pre-approval. So we always want to be very clear, and so. Um, you know, we talk about qualifying ratios for FHA loans, USDA loans, uh, VA loans, conventional. There's a whole chapter on, on obtaining a mortgage. Um, the second piece is all about money. We talk about why it's important to have a spending plan or, or a budget plan. Uh, we talk about tracking your expenses, preparing for emergencies. Uh, the difference is, you know, if you're a homeowner, you know, if the sink goes bad, you're not calling maintenance, it's on you, right? And I think sometimes folks kind of forget that. They think that their house is going to be perfect forever and nothing's ever going to happen, right? But it's, you know, taking care of an, inve an investment. So we really kind of try to go over that. And um, so we, you know, there's talking about money. Let me go back here to my slideshow. And then. And then I can do that. Right, there you go. Right? The importance of saving. So we partner with, with Nancy, uh, and so she comes every month. And, you know, I told the class, we had about 10 people in our class, and I told them, you know, like, you're going to get it straight from the horse's mouth. Ask for all these questions, because she has a lot of answers. I did talk a lot about West Virginia Housing Development Funds program last night, because I was at a meeting in Jefferson County, and um, we were able to, uh, I was able to hear a gentleman speak, and I cannot remember his name, um, but he was talking about this very program that Rick had mentioned. And I'm, I'm really excited because a lot of folks are, you know, kind of trapped paying almost 45, almost 50% of their income towards rent because it's just crazy. gotten so crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's been a, and then we, of course, we have a whole chapter on credit, right? Because that's the first thing everybody wants to know. I want to know my credit score. I want to know my credit score. I'm like, it's not just about the credit score, right? It's about that debt you've got, right? What's on there? What can lenders look at? What are they looking for? You know, two years of good work, of solid work. They're going to verify all these things, you know, when they're when you get ready to apply. Um, but um, and then uh, why? If you don't have credit history, you know why it's important. It's not going to happen overnight. That's just time that it takes. Because sometimes I get young folks and 
well, I don't have any credit. You know, I've never bought anything. Like, okay, well, you're not going to get credit in three months and then think you're going to go buy a house. It's going to take a little bit longer than that. Um, but we talk about identity theft, you know, in particular with our older families that come in or our couples that are in their 50s and 60s and uh, talk about identity theft because we're seeing an increase in that. And typically it's usually family members or friends. Uh, so I always tell them to protect their information, right? And know their rights. You know, we because we're a HUD approved agency, you know, we are actually um, uh, required to talk about their housing rights, fair housing, and and you know, appraisal bias, and all these things that are coming out now. But um, I think that uh, the credit piece, you know, they love the credit part, right? But uh, we have lenders that send us families or individuals. They're like, hey, this person came, they, they, did, they made the horrible mistake of like running around and, ooh, I love this house. I'm going straight to the bank and I'm going to apply without ever doing any background. They just, like, I know I'm paying $1,200 a month rent. I know I can afford a mortgage of $1,200. But they don't realize that there's so much more, right, that goes on behind the scenes that, uh, that lenders are looking at. So. Um, we really try to educate our clients. We do one-on-one -on -one counseling uh, as well. I already had, from the class last night, I was able to get four one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling appointments booked um, so that they can start working on A, their credit. But lenders will send us, you know, I had somebody there that Gail over at CMB sent me, right? Hey, she applied for a mortgage. She needs some help. Her credit's not looking good. She's got 10 pages of, like, crazy credit, bad stuff, right? So I met with her, set up an appointment. So that's what we do. And I, you know, we can help with, you know, if you have a client that's like wants to buy, but they haven't really done a lot of the background or homework, you know, we can help them get prepared for that. Um, so this is the, some of the topics that we cover uh, in that chapter of obtaining a mortgage. This is the one where we talk about the PMI, the different types of loans. Um, the PMI or the MIP, the mortgage insurance premiums, and all of that. Uh, and, you know, so, and we provide resources. You know, we've had guest speakers. We, I've had a realtor or real estate agent come and speak on the next chapter, which is shopping for a home and working with a realtor. Uh, because I actually had a call from the, the group or uh, someone here like two years ago, and they said, hey, Max, you know, we keep getting these calls like, the listing agent isn't giving me any information. I'm like, they're not, right? So explaining the difference between you know, a realtor, a realtor, a, a broker, a mortgage companies, you know, or a bro mortgage brokers, you know. Uh, so how to work with the lender. The book is really a great book. Um, it's put together by NeighborWorks, which is a huge nonprofit that gives a lot of money and does a lot of the HUD certification trainings. Um, we've done foreclosure, we do foreclosure prevention. We have uh, someone who does reverse mortgage. <clears throat> They're actually in our North Carolina office, um, but, um, but we can certainly help clients of yours if they're looking to buy a home, family members. Um, the steps that it takes to get your loan approved and then of course your rights as a loan consumer right so we talked about all the different uh, equal credit opportunity and the different um, program uh, the different rights that they have this is the part you know kind of shopping for a home you know the steps because a lot of times people find are like so what do i do first i'm like hey step one right here's the book use your book i'll give out highlighters and i'm like let's do this right um, we're going to talk about the home buying team, looking for the right neighborhood, um, the types of home ownership, finding your dream home, house hunting, buying a home, purchasing, the sale, and how realtors or real estate agents can help you with all of this, you know. And I, we talk about, like, what are your wants and your needs, you know, like, what's a deal breaker for you couples, right? Like, what's the deal breaker for you? I got to have two bathrooms or I got to have a big kitchen or I have to have a garage. But I'm like, have that conversation. We do fun games to do that, you know, where like you have so many choices and you have X amount of like, I usually buy M&Ms or candy. And like you have to, you only, you have 20 choices, but you only get 15 candies. So you have to figure it. So your party's like, okay, what can I compromise on? What am I willing to give up? 
like the time to start arguing about, oh, well, I went in a townhouse, oh, I want this, is not when the real, the real estate agent is showing you a place. That conversation happens before. You want to be a, a well-informed consumer and have your thought already in mind um, and your budget and your how much you can afford, all of that already kind of planned out and not go backwards. And I can't tell you how many times people in the class will be like, man, they're there just to get the certificates so that they get the certificate so that they can get the down payment assistance. And they're like, man, I wish I had come here first because I was all over the place. I started here, I messed myself up. Then I didn't know what I was doing here. I didn't understand that. I still didn't understand this until tonight. So um, if you have some folks that are tossing the idea and you're like, okay, have you done any homework? Tell them, hey, if there's a home buyer aid class there, there's the eHome America. But I've actually had a real estate agent come in and help talk about you know, shopping for a home and you know the differences between the seller, the buyer, the listing agent, all of that. Uh, and so it's very helpful, you know. Uh, we also have a whole chapter on protecting the investment, you know, uh, how insurance works and uh, saving energy and why it's important and doing preventative maintenance, you know, uh, taking care of your HVAC unit, your furnace, make sure it gets serviced once a year. You have to take care of it. And a lot of times, if you've never owned a home, you grew up and you never grew up in a home that was always an apartment or something that, that was rented, you really don't know that there's a lot of background work that you have to do if you want to protect your investment and keep it going nice, right? So we talk about that. A lot of our uh, customers or our clients that come through um, use the down payment assistance and they can definitely layer it with other programs. I just had a lady who bought a house who used Nancy's program for $14,500. Plus, she did the first front door grant, which is a match. Like if you you put a thousand dollars in, it's three to one, so three dollars to your every one dollar. So you know she got four thousand dollars or however much, right? And then there's also yeah. another one. I think it's uh, Embrace, I think, but they also do the loans. But they offer uh, up to ten thousand. But this lady was able to like use three of them to get the price down to where she could afford the house. And, um, you know, with Nancy's program, you live in the house for five years, and then the, that loan is forgiven. It's like a second mortgage. Um, and so, uh, you know, even though this past year, we only had um, 10 families that took our class purchase a home, where the year before we had 26, and the year before we had 25, um, it went, that number went way down and, you know, obviously like Rick said, with the higher interest rates. So super excited about the West Virginia Housing Development Fund. I, I, we talked a lot about that last night and gave out resources. Now, when I have guest speakers, because we're a HUD certified or HUD approved agency, you know, we're not allowed to steer our clients in any one direction. So if they're asking me like, who's the best realtor? I cannot say, go see Susie Q. I have to say, here's three or five, take your pick. Or I usually tell them, call the board of the, this office and ask for a list and go talk to a whole bunch of them. I'm just like, make a new friend, right? If, if, it, if you're not vibing with this person, you're not married to them, pick somebody else, right? Um, so, and it's okay, same thing. You know, you're, the one you pick might be way too busy. So you just find someone else, right? You can interview and talk to them. And so we always, you know, try to recommend that. I've had lenders come in and talk about obtaining a mortgage, um, but as long as they don't try to sell their per, per product, they can put all their things out in the back and people can grab all their information, business cards and drawing products off the table, but we are not allowed to steer in any one direction. Um, so, uh, but um, protecting yourself, you know, keeping good records, protecting your equity, prepaying your mortgage, uh, coping with hardship, you know, this past year we had, um, you know, how we set goals and we said, well, I think that, you know, this was a year and a half ago, we said, well, we'll probably see about 30 foreclosures, okay, just based on the previous year. Oh, we are like 90 right now that we're working with. Uh, the Homeowner Rescue Fund has been a great help if you run across someone that's struggling or is behind on their mortgage. 
um, by all means, you know, we're more than happy to talk to them, counsel them, assist them in applying for the homeowner assistance or homeowner rescue fund that's run through West Virginia Housing Development. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of resources out there. And uh, one of the reasons I think that, you know, Tolomon has been very blessed. Okay, come on. I keep doing this, right? Uh, is that we've been very blessed is um, that I, Tolomon had at one point had the 211 number, and I actually ran the 211 line. And so part of that was gathering as much information about all the resources in Berkeley and Jefferson County so that when people came called in, I could respond appropriately, right? Um, United Way now runs 211. But we also have what's called the Regional Resource Connection Office. So the Regional Resource Connection was created by a partnership or collaboration through uh, DHHR, Catholic Charities, Salvation Army, and Telemon to help provide additional help for families that are seeking emergency assistance through DHHR. So the process is, let's say I have an electric termination or I have a past due notice on my rent. I would go to DHHR first and they'll say, okay, Maggie, you don't qualify for the emergency assistance program, but we're going to refer you. We're going to send a referral to Talmon, to the Regional Resource Connection Office, and then they're going to look outside of DHHR to find those monies, right? So we have partnerships with Catholic Charities, CCAP, Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul Society. Even the Marlowe Rotan Club, you know, will help with folks in, in the Falling Waters area in Marlowe. Um, and so uh, those are additional resources that are there. We also do uh, uh, partner with Dollar Energy, so we're able to do Dollar Energy grants for electric terminations, but they have to kind of go through the DHHR. So tell them on, you know, being part of the community action uh, agencies, um, fighting the war on poverty, uh, does a lot of work to try and help families become self-sufficient. In fact, we just changed our mission statement this year. And it was before, it was like, you know, building better lives through education and something else I can't even remember. But I really like our new one. It's disrupting the cycle of poverty to, over, to empower families to <coughs> overcome barriers to success, right? And that's really what we do. You know, we really try... No, as I, I had someone last night say, I, I'm probably never ever going to buy a home. I don't know why I did this because I have a fixed income. I'm like, never say never. I, you know, I'm like, only thing you can't fix is death and taxes, right? Um, so, uh, but, you know, connecting her with those resources and things like that to really help them is what we do. So, um, Talamon's been around for over 50 years. We started in 1965 with the National Farm Workers Program back in the 60s and has grown, we're in 11, <coughs> we're in 11 states, we have over 2,000 employees now. Um, in Martinsburg, West Virginia, we, um, our Housing and Financial Empowerment Center, we are right now still in the last three years been number one in the whole company out of 11 states. So we work hard because we really believe in like you know, helping families and, and really, you know, our low to moderate income families and really trying to help educate and disrupt that cycle of poverty because, you know, knowledge is power, right? That's what I've always heard. But uh, we, you know, we, of course, we do some workshops. We do have the classes, right? So I told you about the home buyer education class once a month, at the beginning of the month. But we also do a financial and budgeting class which is called Money Matters, we do that, um, and that's once a month, and then we can also bring that show on the road. Uh, we also have a successful renters program, which is a three-part series, right? So the first part is all about talking about a good lease, uh, you know, how to, what your tenant's responsibilities are, the landlord's responsibilities, how to get a security deposit back, how to you know, protect yourself, why it's important to have renter's insurance, all of that. The second part is our budgeting and financial and power, or budgeting and financial work part. And then the third part is all about uh, fair housing. We usually invite a guest speaker from Legal Aid to talk about rights and what the law says in West Virginia about a proper lease and what to look for, what are some things that, to cover. 
And we also do that. Uh, we're actually going to be in Morgan County High School next week. And we teach that to the seniors and juniors of each high school, right? So we just started that a couple of years ago. And so we've been able to go into Hedgesville High School, uh, Paw Paw High School, way out there, Morton County High School, Martinsburg High School. Haven't been able to get into Musselman yet or Springville, but that's my next one. Yeah, so uh, I just need to form a connection. So if y'all can connect me, that would be great. But, um, you know, the, the whole premise of our home buyer education is really to help the consumer be a well-informed consumer. So um, if you guys have any questions, you know, I'm here. I can't stay too long because I do have a mandatory meeting I'm supposed to go to um, here shortly. But um, if you have any clients or any people that you know of, yes, ma'am. I wrote a project for, for, for this, this program. It was great. I really wasn't aware of it. Right. So, I, yeah, so I have my business card. If, um, I can send out, if I get everybody's email from today, I can mail out every single month when home buyer it is. Right? That's probably my laptop, I bet. But I can mail you the flyer. We, create, we have flyers that we create. It's all on the We always post it on our Telemont West Virginia Facebook page. The flyer for the next home buyer education class. The flyer for the successful writer. So, um, yes. are the classes free? So, all the classes are free except for the home buyer education. The home buyer education, there's a $50 fee because the books are pretty pricey. Um, but it's still less expensive than if they did it online through eHome America. eHome America is also a HUD approved uh, certification that families can get in order to uh, access that down payment assistance. However, it's $100. Um, during the pandemic, we did do virtual, but Nancy really wants folks to come in. We do offer virtual for the $50. It's through our North Carolina office, but they have a completely different schedule, and sometimes it's during the day. So we were trying to meet people where they're at, like after work. Or, you know, if they can't get there right at 5, I'm not like, you're tardy, get out. No, uh, we understand, right? And uh, so... $50, you know, in the beginning, a lot of people were kind of like, that's too much. But if you're serious about buying your home, you got to throw a nickel in that dime, right? If you're not, maybe you're not ready yet, right? Um, and it's still a lot less expensive, you know. Uh, the nice thing is, you know, if you come to our office and you do the home buyer, and let's say it takes you longer than a year to fix your credit, and now your certificate is, um, uh, how do you say, um, expired, thank you. Then uh, what we do is you can just come back for a refresher. You do not have to pay the fee, and we'll, you come to the class one more time, and we will give you another certificate that's good for another year. So, you know, easy peasy. I had one lady there yesterday that I had worked with uh, prior to the pandemic. It was just like three months before the pandemic, and then the pandemic hit. She had all these tax problems. She had, I just hooked her up with like resources for the IRS. I had a friend who worked here and they're like, oh, tell me to call this number and talk to Susan or whatever. And I was like, okay. But she got, it was like $28,000 worth of like IRS stuff and she was able to settle for $1,400. Wow. Yeah. So, it, it, so she was there for her refresher course. She goes, Maggie, I'm going to buy my house now. I said, I'm so happy. Finally. We have had some absolutely fantastic stories. I worked with a, a homeless veteran, and he went from homeless to homeowner in two and a half years. Homeless to homeowner in two and a half years. But we'll stay with you. I tell the clients this all the time, you know. We'll meet with you every month if you want, you know. Every month. 30 minutes for follow-up. The first appointment, we do everything, right? We're going to look at your bank statements. We're going to look at your proof of income. We're going to look at your, your bills. So there's no like, oh, I only spent $20 on eating out. Really? Because this I just added up was $350, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it's not to like, oh, shame on you. It's really just to help them oh, Knowledge. become aware that they're just nickeling and diming themselves to death. Right? I had a young man who bought a townhouse and he made great income. He's only 26 years old. He's an IT guy in Jefferson County somewhere. And... Um, I kept seeing dollar ninety nine, four ninety nine, nine ninety nine, Google Play, PlayStation, PlayStation, PlayStation. I said, what is all this? I said, how much do you think you spent on this in the last thirty days? Because we had the bank statement, 
And he said, oh, I don't know. I, he's like, I usually keep traveling. No, I was like, how do you keep track? He's like, well, I just, you know, I'll look at my, my account. I said, well, that's not really tracking. That's looking to see if you still got money, yeah. right? Uh, so we added it up. I gave him a, a calculator, and I just read out the numbers. And at the end, in the 30-day period, he had spent $378 on PlayStation. But he didn't realize it. He was, like, guessing that it was $150 and something. And then we just kind of take, you know, and then it's just a conversation that you have. But it's really just to make them aware that if you don't track, you're going to bleed out money somewhere. And then you're like, what is my money, right? So, and I, it's just a great feeling when you have those clients that are, like, coming back and they're like, that's the best thing ever. I had this client that did USDA for a very small house and um, in Kernisville. They're both disabled. And um, I think they bought their house, you know, in the interest rate was really well. And they had three bedroom, one bath, uh, little house, cute little house, um, for seventy-eight thousand dollars. So wow. that house is worth two hundred and some odd dollars right now. It's like, Mister Manini, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy too. But um, so you know, those are the things that why I do the work that I do. I've been with Tall Love for 15 years now. I did have a break in employment. I went and got my college degree when I was 48 years old and uh, came back and just was like, I, my heart was drawn to my community, which is West Virginia. Even though I'm not a West Virginia, I'm a Latina. I grew up in Texas, right? And my family's from South America, but I've never lived anywhere like West Virginia where people just really kind of come together to help each other. I, I've had clients come in from Maryland and Baltimore and New Jersey and everywhere, and they're like, I'm like, well, don't you want to go back home? They're like, nobody will help you. They don't care out there. I was like, well, we care. Oh, poor West Virginia. We care, right? So I, I do, I truly believe that, you know, we can help these families, right? And building, generate, you know, generational wealth is, Housing, right? It's investments, and American so dream. it is the American, and that's the name of our the book. The book is called "Realizing the American Dream," there you go. and so we just ordered our newest edition, so that will be out. Hopefully, it will come before the next home buyer education class. So um, we try to keep everything as current as possible. And um, so, if you have any questions, you have any clients you're concerned about, and you're like, you know what, maybe they would benefit from this. Send them our way. We're right there at 67 Aiken Center, tall, uh, you know, off Edwin Miller Boulevard. You know, where there's a big sheet store. We're kind of catty corner in that little shopping center there. So. Don't build. We'll yeah, we're the next door to them and the USDA <laughs> guys, right? Yeah, that's okay. where we're at. Well, I applaud you. I mean, that's, Thank you. I, mean, I love that service. I love doing what I do. I really do. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. Okay. I love it. Thank you so much. Maybe I might take charge and you'll have guest speak for me. So I'm not talking the whole time, right? <laughs> Those poor people are probably like, oh, I should not shut up. <laughs> Thanks again to Maggie and to Chris for our lunch and presentation today. I just want to remind you there's no lunch and learn in December, so we're finished for this year. But we're really hitting the ground in January. So mark your calendars. The marketing is going to be coming out January 10th. We're having a whole afternoon of a, a extended lunch and learn, a professional development day. We have a national keynote speaker, Marky Lemons Ryle, um, that will be giving a presentation on AI and chat GPT. Um, and then we have breakout sessions where you'll be able to learn about Canva and real estate, um, video marketing, and Adobe. So that's going to be at the Blue Ridge um, Center on uh, in Martinsburg, and we'll have the whole afternoon that you'll be able to have the keynote speaker, lunch is provided, um, and the breakout sessions, and then we also are going to have hopefully affiliates set up with vendor vending stations. So.